Peter, crude had fallen quite significantly uh, overnight. What is the sense that you get in terms of crude? What is it trying to factor in? Is it once again the China slowdown that the street is factoring in? Well, good afternoon. I think a couple of things. First off, yes, the absolute as far as the China numbers, and we've got to be very conscious from the economic growth. It's slowing across that whole China basin, and the PBOC announces a surprise rate cut. You've got there's the major concern, and that's strengthening as far as US dollar, and it's very much in a, a softening phase at the moment. Uh, let's see where it rolls over the rest of the month. Now, Peter, the shell also joining in the conversation, and uh, coupled with uh, you have the global uh, week global data, economic data coming from China. You also have reports that, that we are likely to see some more supply coming in from Libya, as well as the fact that Iran may arrive, or the talks for the nuclear deal have restarted. So, on prospect of that, also we'll have a higher supply of crude. So, where does that leave us with the crude prices? Do you think the Brent will continue to stay below the hundred dollar per barrel mark, and importers like us have no need to worry for now, at least? Well, I think so. I, I feel as though that we've got plenty of supply. The other side, of course, is that you're, where we're looking, you know, this time of year, it's not unusual because if, as long as you don't have any weather outages or any surprises, we may see a continuation as far as softness is for price over the next couple of months, which would be very nice for consumers and very good for the Indian consumer. And the overall theme at the moment is that uh, you know, we've we've been through that very heavy sell-off. We're down about 25%, and it just seems to be a downward channel for pricing at the moment. So, no, it's very hard to say where we're going to as far as the low, but it seems to be going down in value. In terms of a slowdown, you think prices were out of the whack and now they are coming back to neutralcy. So whatever new data comes in, whether it's from the Fed, whether it's from the inflation, whether it's from the growth, other commodities will tend to react? Well, I think so. We've seen, if you're talking about other commodities first off, we've seen a very nice bounce to the upside for some of those base metals and copper gone from 7100 to $8,000 a metric tonne over the last few weeks. So there's the first point as far as, uh, as, far as demand. The second, which was oversold. So the other side is that I think the overall momentum, we're seeing softness, we're seeing uh, fragility across a lot of these uh, economies with very high inflation. And the overall, I think, mood at the moment is demand destruction and plenty of crude and softer pricing. So, you know, there's a lot of bad news out there as well. And we've got to be conscious of that and what impact it's having to crude. And you've got the midterm elections only about two and a half months away. Let me talk about agri-commodities. Most of them saw a sharp spike uh, post that uh, Russia-Ukraine uh, war that started and uh, no doubt the war is ongoing. We've seen a cool off in most of these agri-commodity prices. Where do you see them headed from here on? Do you think there's everything uh, the, uh, the worst is already priced in? I think so. If I'm looking at you know the, the situation as far as Ukraine and Russia, that war premium seems to be well and truly stripped out of the market now. So at the moment, I mean, I've seen very solid moves as far as the wheat market. If you're looking at soybeans and corn, they've all been quite volatile. So if it, that's from an agricultural sector. If you're looking at base metals, some of those have been bid up. Energy prices... You know, there, there's just that structural softness entering the market. And as I said, that's a very good sign for global inflation with softer pricing and far better for importers like India and, and the consumer across Main Street. 